iPad. Okay, I think I can see you now. So if, if you need me to stop and, and slow up, because this, this fly takes a little while to tie, so we'll probably only tie one copy of it tonight. So it'll probably take us a half hour to get through it. Um, we'll just see how our time goes. But if you need me to slow up, um, just, just let me know. Okay, as far as hooks go, the hook that I sent you is the old, as well as the new version, the old classic must add 34007. It's their standard saltwater hook in size two. Um, it's a 1XL standard hook, but pretty much everyone makes a standard saltwater hook. You could even use something like a, a Gammy B10S if you wanted to. Sting, a streamer hook would work fine, but that, this, this hook is a really, really good hook. And you know, catch, you introduced us all to it. A number of years ago and it really um it really is a versatile hook and this size two seems to work work really well i've tied these in four um you could if you had some big slopping you could probably tie a six inch long version of this because this one is this one is about four inches long and it of course it just depends on how long you tie your saddle hackle all right, so I'm using, um, as I mentioned earlier, some of you may not have signed on, I'm using 140 denier white thread. So if you have white thread, that would be fine. Um, your head is going to obviously show. So whatever color your thread is, white or chartreuse for this, this white over chartreuse, chartreuse would be good. And this is uh, Viva's power thread that I'm using. I just started using this thread and like I do with other flies, I like to start my thread as a marker for the front of my body. So I don't, I'm, I'm going to start my thread about a hook eye and, and a half back. And that will be the forward point that all of my body materials will be, which it helps keep me from crowding the head. So I'm going to just run my thread down the hook to about above the barb, just short of the barb and then run it back to near the front of my tie-in. So you can see that I have a nice gap here because it is really, really easy with this bucktail as it bulks up in the front to crowd the eye. And you can usually get it out, but it's, um, it's much, much easier to, to keep it away from it to begin with. Now the tail on this is, um, you can look, you certainly you slop in, uh, and this is just the inexpensive or relatively inexpensive strong saddle hackle, the China stuff, the five to seven inch that, that we all have. And there's really, there, there are a number of schools of thought. The uh, lefty Cray, like, you know, the, the, the feathers have a, a curve, a concave and a convex side. He liked to tie them with two pairs with the concave side facing each other to make a narrower fly. Others out there on the internet just uh, tie them with the with the feathers splayed out away from each other with a convex side, uh, so they they spread they spread out in the tail. And I kind of like go along with Tim uh, Tim Flagler and Tightline, but he, and he just talks about just a random, um, just grab four or five feathers, and just bring them together and get the ends roughly equal, and and tie them in that way. So with this, if you can get uh, four or five feathers, depending on what size they are, and I like and I like to pre-cut these, and the tail seems to me looks the best when it's about two and a half times the length of the hook the uh, the hook shaft, and the for this size hook that comes out to trimming to about three and a quarter inches. So if you want to pre-trim these before you um, before you tie it in, uh, bun bunch up your four or five feathers and trim them to three and a quarter inches. That'll work out just about right. And once I have those together, I'm just going to tie those. Give my bobbin a counterclock spin so that thread would jump to the rear and tie those in right at that front point of my thread. I'm a little over, but that's fine. And then I can hold up on those feathers and just wrap all the way back and just lash all of that down. 
about back to the hook point. It looks a little messy, but we're going to cover all that up so it won't make any difference. And once we tie that bunch of saddle hackle in, let's leave our thread about the middle of the tie in on our body. Oh, hang on just a second. Something weird is going on with my phone. Okay, we have we have tails tied in. Anybody need a couple of more minutes on the tail? Give me about a minute and a half, please. This mic. Okay. Okay, I'll give you a minute fifteen. That's all you've got. That's 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 all I need, man. I'm with you. All right. Good deal. Now with our thread about midway, the next thing we tie in is uh, a bit of flash. And I've sent um, silver crystal flash to you and I've sent some uh, uh, flashaboo to you. Uh, you can use the normal, th this is the normal thin flashaboo that I sent because the, uh, the salt water, the medium size was out of stock everywhere. But with this fly, when I generally tie it, I use the medium size. I only use about two pieces on each side. But for the silver, let's get the piece of silver, two pieces of silver flashaboo, two strands of it, and even it up, uh, fold it over and cut it in half so you have four half length strands. You take, uh, you using crystal flash or flashaboo? Um Crystal yep. flash, crystal flash first. Yeah, the silver crystal okay. flash first. Yeah, take take two strands of it, fold it in half, uh, cut it, so you'll have four half length strands. All right. Now, once we have that cut, the way I like to do this is in the center of of that half length strand, loop it under the hook, and in front of the thread and then grab the thread and that keeps it from sliding back. And then you can just wrap it down each side like this. And I like to trim it while it's in my hand. We want to trim this just a little bit shorter than the length of the tail. So we have a total of eight, eight pieces of that flashy, but it's not critical. You get whatever, if you like it really flashy, put more. If you don't like as much, don't put as much. Now, if you'll notice mine on the screen, if you notice how it's all flared up and kind of sticking up, if you want to, to kind of gather that, hold it and take your thread back and give it a few loose wraps, not tight wraps, but loose wraps over that very end of that flashy boo, and that will gather it down to where it doesn't... Uh, doesn't flare as bad. Okay, next is the flash boot. And I have about um, oh, a half dozen strands. It's pretty small, I don't really count it. It's, I just grab six or eight strands of it and I tie it in exactly the same way. Uh, with my thread back up to the midpoint, I loop it in the middle in front of my thread and then tie it down the hook shaft, each side of the hook shaft. Back to the back and bring my thread back up. And we want these a little bit longer than the tail or about the same length. So let's go ahead and trim them while they're in our hands. And hang on to it. All 
right, have a good one. There's Jim. Hey, Jim. Now, the, uh, Tom Rosenbauer talks about the body of the fly. At, at this point, when he's tying, because he, he fishes for a lot of toothy fish with this fly, he doesn't put any type of body, and we're going to use the diamond braid that I sent you and, and put a, um, wrap a, a flash body on this. He takes the body just, just as we have it here and fishes it just like this, puts UV epoxy or super glue on it and to reinforce it and fishes it just like this. He said for the fish he, um, he fishes with for the, the flash body just comes, comes undone. So let's take our thread back to the front of where we tied the feathers in. And we want that piece of uh, diamond braid. Looks like this. Now your, yours looks a little different than that. I sent all, all that I had out and this is some that I had, but it's, it's almost the same. And we want to tie that diamond braid in right at the front. And again, not, not get in front of that thread point if we can help it with a few, few wraps. Hold it on top of the hook shank and just give it some wide wraps all the way back and then take our thread back to the front again. You don't wrap it around the hook shank? Hook shank? Yeah, we're going to in just a second here. I oh, got you. Okay. Yep. I just tied it in the front and then just and brought it all the way to the back. You could tie it in at the back, but then you'd have that little bump back there from the, from the tie in. And, and Mike, we definitely we want a nice, uh, lot, nice level body on our fly. It makes a big difference to the fish. So, yep, mm -hmm. <laughs> it does. All right. So now, once you have it tied in the front, your thread back, um, as Mike mentioned, let's go ahead and wrap it, and just touching wraps all the way up to your thread point. Have a rotary vise, you can spin it up there, but uh, I'm just wrapping mine. And give it a couple of couple of wraps to tie it down. And trim it off. So again, we're trying to maintain that one and a half to two, two eye there. Catch you time with us tonight or uh, just watching? Can't hear you. Okay, you can hear me now? Yeah, yeah, I got you now. Okay, I'm watching on three different uh, mediums. Oh, good. Zoom, how's, the, uh, YouTube, how's, the YouTube, TV. how's the YouTube How's the YouTube look? Looks great. Good. Yeah, I think it actually is sharper than the, than the Zoom. All right, now the nice thing about, about using this, this uh, diamond braid for the body is it creates this nice bump right here at the front of our front of our hook and that will help elevate our our bucktail wings and keep them from just lying flat along the hook shank so we have this this nice bump so the next thing we want to do is is tie our first bucktail wing in and we're going to use um, white for the bottom wing white for a top wing and then chartreuse for the very top wing so we'll have two top wings and one bottom wing so if you have a rotary vise, just invert your hook. And if you don't, just take it out and, and put it back in upside down. And we want our we want to keep our thread back again about that that initial tie-in point. And cut a a piece of or a bunch of bucktail. Probably if you pull it off that bunch I sent you and twist it, slightly smaller than a pencil. Not quite as big as a pencil because one thing you really don't want to do on this fly is is overdress the bucktail and 
can take this from the voice of experience. If you get too much bucktail on it, it all clumps up at the top and slips out on you. And so cut your bucktail off and you want to certainly pull out any of these short fibers at the bottom. And we want a wing that extends roughly halfway back um, along our, our saddle hackle tail. So somewhere in that range. And so once you get that measurement, transfer right hand or left hand, depending on whether you're right or left handed to the other hand, and then trim that bucktail off square. Now you don't have to trim it before the tie in, but it makes it much easier. And you notice I'm holding the bucktail in kind of a little vertical stack. It's not a round ball, it's a little vertical stack. And that will help with tie in. Now we all, we wanna make sure we give that bobbin a counterclockwise twist. So we want that thread to jump back for us, jump to the back and then put that stack behind the eye of the hook. As you can see here, I have it totally behind the eye of the hook and take a couple of wraps just all the way back against your finger. Don't get close to those tips because it will slip out. Take a couple of loose collecting wraps and then tighten down on it and really tie it in at the rear of that bunch of bucktail before you then move to the front and tie in the front. And then I always like to go back to the rear again and give it a couple of more just to make sure it doesn't come out. What was the length of that again? How long? It, uh, the tip should extend about halfway down the saddle hackle tail. Gotcha. Thank you. And then we can use the bodkin or scissors just to split that and kind of make it a little neater on each side of our hook. <laughs> All right, we're doing good out there. A little more time on the bucktail. Let's see, Mark's got his in. Flip's got his in. Okay. Now, we want to cover the side of the hook with our bucktail if we can. Because, matter of fact, if you watch Tim Flagler's video, he puts a bunch on one side, a bunch on the other. But if you don't have a rotary vise, that's a little difficult to do. So what you can do to spread this out is just take your thumb and just kind of work some of that bucktail at the very back of your thread around down each side of the hook. And you can see now my bucktail's down about halfway down the hook shank body. So that's one piece of our body. I'm sorry, one piece of our wing. Okay, so let's rotate the hook back up, back upright. And bring our thread to the rear of what's becoming our head here. We want our thread to be hanging right here. And we want another clump of bucktail, probably a little, a little more sparse than the one you just used because remember we're putting two clumps of bucktail on top. So I've trimmed one out here. You can see that's a, a little, a little more sparse than the one I had on the bottom and get those short fibers out of the bottom. And again, measure it about halfway back or it extends halfway down the tail. and trim it square. Now, just like we did with the, the bottom wing, let's give our bobbin a counterclockwise spin and put that stack of bucktail just behind the eye and see it kind of wants to go around the hook shank all on its own, which is good, and give it a couple of loose wraps and then let's bind down the entire clump. Okay. 
Now, bucktail is one of those materials that sometimes it works, it ties and makes a nice, perfectly tapered head. Like this one's not too bad. Sometimes I have this ledge in the front that I have to push down with a thumbnail to keep the taper on the head. But again, get to the back and make sure it's bound down. Now, if you want a solid white lefty's deceiver, you could whip finish and stop here. You'll be ready to fish just as it is, unless you wanted to add eyes to it, of course. Um, but we're going to put that additional chartreuse wing, give it that chartreuse and white, that Pete Cooper, all colors work as long as they're sharp chartreuse and white. Isn't that what he said, Jim? <laughs> and the chartreuse bunch we want is about the same size as the white, uh, the top wing, the white top wing bucktail. We don't want a really thick chartreuse because now we've, we're going to stack it on top of this one and we don't want the head to be too bulky. So we want that wing to be about the same length. You could actually make it a little bit longer if you like, since it's on the very top. I'm, I'm gonna have mine extend back just a little bit more than the white. Now, when I, when I trim this one, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I'm going to trim it at a slight angle. I'm gonna exaggerate the angle with my scissors like this to facilitate tapering the head. But the actual angle I'm going to trim is not, not too much of an angle, but it's just about like that when I trim it. If you get your angle too steep, your, your thread won't reach the top, top fibers. So I have mine. It's, so you can see it's not much of an angle, but it is a little bit. So give that bobbin another counterclockwise twist. Take that first collecting wrap in the very back and that thread's going to want to slip on it. So make sure you bind it down in the back first before you move forward. And then we can begin wrapping and try to cover up most of the bucktail. It's not of course, mandatory that you do, but it just makes for a neater looking head. And again, you can take your thumbnail and kind of mash it down a bit to get a little better taper out of it. Bucktail always wants to stick up and you have your thread slip off of it. But there we go. That's that's about like most of my thread, my heads come out. You see some that are smaller than that, but um, it's a pretty decent taper on that. And you can go ahead at this point and we're going to tie in the bottom throat, the red part. So we bring our thread again, back to the rear of the head again and invert the fly once more. And I see I have a couple of spots of bucktail to cover there. It is right there. <laughs> our, our thread hang there. Now for the throat, I take two strands of the red crystal flash. I fold it in half and cut it and then fold it in half again and cut it. So I fold it in half and cut it twice. And so that gives you eight strands that are about five inches long total, I guess. Two strands of red, fold in half, cut, fold in half, and cut a second time. Now, the way I like to tie this crystal flash in is not wrap it around, of course, the head, because that would wrap around the entire head. Wrap it around my thread and then I can bring it up and place it just exactly where I want it. Not quite like that there. And tie it down right at the back of the head of my fly. Now you wanna trim this before you let go of it because it's hard to get it back in your fingers. 
among all that bucktail. So you want to trim it about two thirds of the way to the hook point, right there. Once you get your red throat tied in, go ahead and bring your hook back upright and whip finish. Whip finish and cut your thread. <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> All right. Now the eyes on this are totally optional. I'm not, going to, I'm not going to start on right now, but <clears throat> you could certainly put head cement on this or UV epoxy and it would be ready to go now. But I kind of like the way the eyes look on it. And, and uh, most of the ones you see have eyes. And so the, the eyes I sent you are 330 second little stick on flat eyes. And they, they work really well for this fly. Uh, one eighth might be a little bit better for this size hook and this size head, but um, the little 330 seconds seem to work pretty well too. And the nice thing about these flat eyes is if you don't have UV epoxy, you can just put head cement over it and it works fine. It covers the eyes up just fine. Uh, whereas if you had some of the, the more 3D type, the domed eyes, you would really need um, three, uh, UV epoxy or UV resin to, to coat it. All right, now as far as the eyes go, I find it much easier to take a bodkin and pick the eye off the card and hold it on the end of that bodkin and then put, put it where I want it, put my thumb over it and then just roll the bodkin out from under it and it seems to stay in place pretty well. And then we turn it over to the other side and try to get the eye in about the same position. Again, on a bodkin, put your thumb on top of it and roll the bodkin out from under it. Okay, that one's a little low. Well, you can just take your fingernail or thumbnail and slide it around. I don't think the fish are going to look on both sides of your fly to make sure the eyes are in the same position, but it, we like for them to like for it to look neat. And that pretty much finishes the fly. It, if you have UV epoxy, UV epoxy is certainly more durable than head cement. But I'm going to use just Sally Hansen hard as nails. And I like to give it a fairly, fairly good coat. And I also like to coat back into the bucktail to, to help keep that bucktail from slipping out. Because from the durability standpoint, when I've had these flies come apart, that's what happens is the bucktail slips out of the head. And if you have UV epoxy, you can certainly put UV, um, that UV resin into the bucktail and that will really help, help the fly's durability. But it levels out pretty well. I usually use two coats of this. Sally Hansen's put one on tonight and then tomorrow I'll come back and put another fairly thick coat on. And again, the really nice thing about this fly is that um, it really rides nicely in the water. If you've ever fished a seducer or this fly, that saddle hackle has a wonderful action. I mean, it really comes alive in the water. And a lot like uh, a lot like rabbit zonker does, and you can still get it deep. You use a sink tip line or a sinking line with a short leader, and you can still fish it across the bottom if you like. But um, it's a really really versatile pattern. Have any of you fished with this this pattern before?